Hello and welcome. Have you ever heard the saying that we are what we say we are? So if this is the case, we pretty much can create our lives to be whatever we put our minds to. The benefit of this is, I guess, if your life isn't as you want it to be at the moment, you can change it. You know, just like a canvas, we can paint a picture of how we want our lives to look. And it all, it all starts by taking control of our thoughts. Now, let's face it, there's always something in our lives that we would like to improve on or to be better at and or to have in our lives. But the question is, how can we change from where we are at the moment to where we want to be? Well, it all starts with our thoughts, strengthening and conditioning and training our mind, just like any other muscle in our body. And one of those tools that we can use to do this is um, affirmations. And we're here today and we're fortunate enough to be joined by our special guest, Kim Norton, founder of Rainbow Light Therapies, to talk to us all about it. Now, Kim is a holistic uh, counsellor specialising in stress and anxiety management for children, teens and adults. Um, and Kim provides a unique and intuitive individualised therapy approach uh, to stress anxiety management through individual, uh, small and family group sessions and work workshops and um, begun doing so after her son's autism diagnosis diagnosis in 2007 and Kim also works with special needs children and their families as an NDIS uh, registered provider and is an all-round beautiful human being it's so great to join you and thank you for joining us today Kim how are you I'm wonderful thank you for having me Rachel now, this is um, something that I'm personally very passionate about and I've sort of done right throughout my life. But, you know, it might, might be something that a lot of people aren't too familiar with. So it's really great to sort of unpack all of this. Um, and I guess to start with the way I see it um, and tell me if this is right or wrong, but pretty much our minds shape our perspective of life and the way that we see it, you know, how we see things, what we think um, and um, you know, how we feel about a situation and in turn how we act and what we do. So the key to making, um, I guess, positive change in our lives is to take control of what we think. What are your thoughts on this? That is um, pretty much exactly right, Rachel. <laughs> That's oh, exactly cool. what I subscribe oh, cool. to as well. Yeah. Um, our brain <laughs> has this wonderful way of believing everything we tell it. So if we can put some positive energy into telling it some positive things, um, then our lives are going to be a little bit more positive all around as well, but which, which in turn will affect how we act um, and how we behave. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And look, on a personal level, when I've wanted to bring something into my life, I've always started with like the end in mind, you know, picturing in my mind, what is the end result of what it is I'm pursuing or bringing into my life. Um, and that's really the anchor that draws me forward and towards it. Um, and daily affirmations are almost like the fuel that keeps my engines going, like as I'm sort of working towards it. Would you say this is sort of the case? Yes. Yeah. That's a wonderful example. Um, if we can affirm what we want rather than what we don't want and put all of our energy into what we want, we will have a better chance of getting that, whatever that might be. Um, obviously, there's work, always work to be done. You can't say that you want to win Tats Lotto but not buy a Tats Lotto ticket. Of course. You have to help it along <laughs> a little bit. Um, and it's great to affirm that you want a certain type of job, but if you haven't done the training or you don't have a resume, you're not going or to get that applied job. for the job. Or <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. So there's always work to be done, but it, it's just a great way to help that along and create yes. that in to help it. Yep. Definitely. So on that, um, now we published your art article and the title is positive affirmations. I am statements. Now for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you please give us an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? Sure. Okay. So if the article is about positive affirmations and what they are and how they can help you. Um, and in particular, this article is about I am statements, which are a type of positive affirmation. Um, I am statements are really empowering because you are affirming exactly who you want to be and who yes. you are. So if you needed help with feeling a, um, a little bit more brave, 
for a job interview or for a kid doing an exam, you would affirm that you are brave. So you would say, I am brave. If you keep telling yourself you're scared or that you're stupid or you're dumb or you're going to fall over, guess what's going to happen? You're going to do exactly, it. <laughs> it's exactly what's going to happen. So I, it's just a wonderful way of rewiring or retraining the brain. Yeah. So yeah. Well, to begin with, for someone that maybe isn't all too familiar what affirmations are, could you please explain what are affirmations? Yep. So they're simply sentences that will affect the subconscious and conscious parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. So it's all about rewiring the brain to reflect a state of being. Okay. And that, that's, that's it. Love it. And so I, I was reading up um, in preparation for this today, the technical definition of what an affirmation is, is technically a statement which affirms something to be true. So in this context, we are, I guess, manifesting and bringing and drawing something into our lives by simply saying it is so by positive statements that declare uh, what the specific goal is. So I guess affirmations, would you say, are a technique of doing this? Would you say that's correct? Definitely. Yes, 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 definitely. And it's, it is only one technique, but it is a very powerful one. Yeah. yeah. Our, words, our words have energy. Oh, and, absolutely. Um, they that's do. where spells come from, <laughs> spelling, <laughs> words, yes. energy, um, putting it out there. Um, if you don't ask for something or you don't affirm something, it's, you, you're not going to get it. It's not going to happen. I'm a huge believer in that. If you don't ask, you, yeah. you never receive. And people say, well, I don't have this and I don't have that in my life, which may be true. But the question is, at what point in your life have you actually actively asked yeah. to bring it yeah. into your life as well? Exactly. So that's, yeah. yeah. And yep. so affirmations work by really challenging our thoughts, both consciously and subconsciously, um, yes. which, um, as we mentioned very briefly before, like change our actions. And it's those actions that make the change, would you say? Definitely. And those actions create our reality. Yes. Yeah. And if, if you, yeah, sorry, if, if you feel that you're, if you are coming up for um, an exam, and you are constantly telling yourself, I'm stupid, I don't get this, I don't understand it, I'm going to fail. The, the action is that you're going to be less likely to study, you're going to be less likely to prepare yourself, and the end result is that you will probably fail. But if you tell yourself that you're going to do the best you can or that you've got this, and in a realistic way, because we know that when we set goals, um, we do them realistically, yeah? that suit your circumstance, your lifestyle, uh, your state of being so um, realistic goal if you study and do your best and you've done the work and the preparation well then you should pass yes and how That's, much of this do you think with affirmations is science-based or woo-woo as people would say um sort yep. of woo-woo stuff <laughs> yep so i don't know all of the science behind it i know there has been a lot of research put into this um i know that people um and i don't have the, the facts and figures for you but i do know um in uh, cancer hospitals and other medical institutions that the people who concentrate on the positive rather than the negative and i'm not talking about um talking themselves out of having cancer that's the woo woo side <laughs> that we, we're not talking about what we're talking about is the putting yourself in that positive state of being able to handle it and move through that circumstance that might not be so desirable so that you're seeing the positive outcome. And those patients that have done that have been able to reach a more positive state of mind and get through their illness a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, how I mentioned at the start of the chat that um, on a personal level, I've used affirmations in my own life. Um, for anyone listening or watching them, it may have heard me mention before that I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis when I was younger um, and was uh, never told I was meant to really do much with my life. I was never really supposed to walk. I was completely paralyzed down my right side and I was blind in my left eye um, and uh, at that time uh, I was told six weeks before my 16th birthday and on my 16th birthday I had a, a dance performance now at that time 
um, I was completely paralyzed. I, I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything, but uh, I yeah. really wanted to perform on my 16th birthday at uh, that, that particular dancing concert. And I had seven doctors sitting around my bed and I told them, you know, as a chirpy eyed 15 year old girl, well, you know, I'm going to dance at that concert. And they all laughed in my face at me and it made me very angry. Um, but um from that, I use positive affirmations every single day, um, which willed my thoughts and then my actions. Um, and within that six weeks, I did actually teach myself to walk and I danced at that concert. Now, oh, wow. as you said, you know, and um, as a disclaimer, um, I, I really do believe that our mind can create incredible things. But from that, I, I know it isn't always the case with, with all illnesses. But um, for me, lucky enough, um, I willed myself through positive af affirmations through that. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, all these years later, touch wood, it's never returned. So I, on a personal level, know um, firsthand that positive affirmations can and do work. Um, and it's not just that you have to just ask and, 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 and want and wish for things. You do actually have to uh, put the actions behind it. Um, but yes, Definitely, yeah. as you just mentioned with, with cancer patients, e even if it yeah. doesn't cure the illness, it definitely can make um, the experience um, of, and the illness itself um, a, a lot yeah. easier to be able to, to live through, would you say? Yes, definitely. And it's exactly what you just said. You would have put in a lot of hard yards into your recovery as well so it's not just a case of affirming something it's backing it up with action and yes well yeah. done to you that's an amazing story yeah and here I am all these years later um but and it was and I I, I know for a fact because I I, I I sort of willed it out of myself in the sense that the positive affirmations yeah. as I mentioned at the start I, I saw myself and anchored myself to the end result and that was dancing at the concert and um yes. that's what actually that was a feel, as I mentioned earlier on, that really did push me forward. But, you know, really, I guess positive affirmations um, do require, like, uh, regular practice um, in, in that the, if you want to make lasting long-term change to the way that you feel and to your life. So I think, yes, it is probably some form of science and not so much magic because you do actually have to put the practice and the energy behind it. Um, but so I guess the good news is that the practice and the, the popular popularity of positive affirmations is based widely um, and it's widely accepted and well-established um, psychological theory. So from that it's, perspective, yeah. would you say? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, something else that helps with them, um, just to add that in, is the visualisation that can go with it. Yes. So I know with the kids, I teach the kids um, to, because a lot of our kids are visual learners. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a visual learner myself. So I, I like to see what I want in my head. Um, and, and that helps to create that reality as well. And then uh, develop the positive affirmations that go along with that. Yes. So if you were on a weight loss journey or if you were on a... Um, you know, that exam example before, you would see yourself looking the way that you wanted to look or you would see yourself holding that um, test paper with an A plus on it or whatever yep. it is that you were trying to achieve. Yep. Yeah. yeah definitely and, helps. And we'll speak about this a, a, a little bit more in just a moment, how you can actually do um, and practice these, these things on a daily basis to help sort of, I guess, um, make the whole process a little bit faster. But the next question I wanted to ask you is, you know, what can positive affirmations do to help other people? Okay. So they, they can help you to realize where you want to be. So they can help motivate you to get to where you want to be. They can help you realize what you want. It's a type of goal setting in a way yeah. as, as well. Um, it's no point saying that you want to be, a certain type of person or a certain weight or reach a certain level in a sport um, if, if you don't know that you want to do that and, and then you can work out how you're going to achieve that. So like you said, seeing the end picture, this is where I want to be. So then it's how can I get there? And on those days when you're feeling really, oh, you know, I want to eat that chocolate cake or I want to have that glass of wine. Every day. Or I don't want to do that study <laughs> or I don't want to do this. Um, having that visualisation in front of you or having that picture of that end result is really powerful. Yeah. Well, then how can people create affirmations and I am statements of their own then? Okay. So working out what they would like and how they would want to be or a state of being or how they would like to feel. Um, and quite often... 
Uh, it can be something really simple like um, I am happy. You might be going through a little bit of a, 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 at the moment, I know a lot of people are stressed and worried about different things. So it could be I am happy. And then you would do things that would make you feel happy as well. Yep. So you, you would do the, the exercise or the eat the chocolate cake or watch the movie or do something that made you feel happy as well. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things sometimes in life that if we are unhappy, it's, it's the process of elimination and working out what it is that we want in our lives to make us happy. And I think that's the process of actually, as we mentioned earlier on, of actually asking for it. There's no, there's no, there's no joy in just, I guess, swimming around and just constantly sort of complaining about the status quo, about things not being the way that we want them to be. And this whole COVID era is a perfect example of that. There's so much that is a little bit out of our control, but we can control our thoughts and we can control our, um, our, I guess, our world, our little bubble around us by making decisions as to how and what, why and sorry, what we want to do to be able to get ourselves through it. So it's really, I guess, the process of reprogramming our subconscious minds um, to be able to, you know, sort of, I guess, rewire them, as you said, to, to be able to create a better reality for ourselves, would you say? Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, when we are in a situation like we are at the moment with COVID, where we feel like things are out of our control, mm -hmm. our stress levels go up. Because one way of controlling our stress and anxiety is to control our environment okay so letting go at the moment is really hard for a lot of people so understanding that and then understanding what you can control or how you want to feel about that or what you can do about that are they the things you can affirm and yes. make those positive emotions about and it can be simple things you can post post-it notes around your mirror in the bathroom if you want to look at that the first thing you get up in the when you get up in the morning and you want to say you know I am happy or I can do this or I've got this under control today or I am a good mum if you're feeling particularly bad about that at the moment. Um, people have I am statements on their phones as their sc uh, screensavers on their computer. Wherever you need to write them down, you can be in a journal, uh, stick them on the fridge underneath a magnet. Kids love doing that as well. Uh, they can add to it every day. Kids love drawing as well because they like to see that end result in that uh, tactile way. So it's a, a picture rather than a picture in their head, it's an actual picture on the wall or on the fridge. So there's lots of ways that you can remind yourself and lots of ways that you can do that. Yes, and vision boards are also really good things as well. Yeah. Uh, as well. So they anywhere, are. Anywhere that's that's visual that people can, um, on a daily basis um, can, um, I guess, sort of see it, as, as you said, on, in, in the mirror in the bathroom as they're brushing their teeth or having yep. a shave for, for the guys um, and for the girls maybe as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah <definitely. laughs> um, But it's about on the fridge, um, anywhere, and, and also on your phone setting reminders. Um, I used to... Um, before I was working in, in Kittypedia full time and I was getting the train to work every day, every day um, I knew I was getting the train at a certain time would set a reminder that my daily affirmation would come up. And as I was waiting for the train and I'd program my, my mind as I was heading into work and to set, set the intention for the day. Um, yep, that's a wonderful idea. So in your, in your, in your mind, then how does someone, um, I guess, sort of do this? How many times per day should they, I guess, say an, an affirmation to themselves, would you say? as many times as they need to hear it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yep. It can, you know, once when they get up in the morning might be enough. Um, for other people, it can be every hour on the hour. For, every, for another person, it might be once a week. Okay, depending on what it is, on what the actual affirmation is or what the end result, the desired end result is and how long it's going to take to get there. Yeah. So if you're, if you're doing, a, you know, a four-year um, you know, bachelor degree, <laughs> it's, you might need to tell yourself every, mind yourself every day why I'm doing this. This yes. is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. And it might take four years for someone else. It could, it could be a weekly goal. It could be a daily goal or you know, a four yearly goal. Depends on what it is. Yeah. And and I think a lot of people generally sort of um, set the goals of morning, um, afternoon and evening. So at least sort of three times 
uh, a day um, as well. So as you said, it just depends, I guess, how much they want it, what's going, um, you know, how their days are planned as well. But I guess the more you think yourself into the situation, the quicker eventually you're going to believe it, would you say? Yes, definitely. Definitely. The mo- yes, the more you say it and you have to say it with belief, that belief yes. word is, is, is crucial as well. So if we affirm in the positive and in the present and with that belief system behind it, you will have a lot um, greater chance of that affirmation coming true. Yeah, I guess when you start believing it, then you start working and becoming focused on, I guess, achieving and accomplishing sort of those goals that you've sort of set, set for yourself. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And, um, and, and in, in that respect, it's, just, it's a matter of, I guess, people working out how to work that into their day. Um, now, as a question, do we have to say affirmations out loud? Um, you know, in, do you, in your mind, does it help that our ears can hear it? And I guess that we're putting it out to the universe. What's your thoughts? Um, that really helps some people. I think it's an individual thing. If you're sitting in the middle of an exam, it might not be inappropriate <laughs> to talk out loud. It's like an affirmation or the middle of a business meeting or, you know, <laughs> the, the other circumstances where it might not be a good idea. Um, but sometimes definitely, yes, if, if that words have power and words, the spoken word has a different energy to what a, an internal dialogue has. Yes. So if you can do both. I would do both. It, it, and I would write it down and I would type it and I would do it yeah. every way that you possibly can um, because you know, the written word has a different energy than the, the uh, words that are typed as well because we use a different part of our brain to type to what we do to write. So I would attack it on all levels. And I think sometimes too, when we say things aloud, it makes it real. If something's just in our mind sometimes, or if it's a personal thing that we have it, um, as you said, in written form or on a mobile phone or what have you, yep. that's a very personal thing and that is very powerful and we need that. I think that yep. sometimes I've, uh, I've personally found that when, when I say things aloud, even just to myself, you know what I find? Driving my car, um, you know, be, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm really sort of just opening up a lot of my personal stuff. <laughs> anyway, here we go. But <laughs> if you ever see me driving my car and talking, a lot of the time I won't be necessarily talking to anyone else. I'm talking to myself. Um, yep. Because I find the car is one of those great things. As people, as they see you driving, assume that you're talking to someone else, yep. Um, yep. not necessarily an affirmation to yourself. Uh, but anyway, just I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, no, I'm talking it, about it, saying things aloud. <laughs> I am a counsellor. People do tend to open up when they yeah. talk to me. That's good. Yeah. So, no, no that, that's wonderful. And it, yeah, and <laughs> the other. The other thing I would add is if you're used to typing everything, then if you try writing it, it might have a bigger impact because it, uh, it is a different way of, of communicating to what you're used to. Yes. So it's, yeah. even we're communicating with ourselves. Yeah. So I talk to myself all the time, Rachel, the best people do. Trust yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a question, can we do affirmations for somebody else, do you think? Um. You can because the in, the intent is good, I'm assuming. So we would affirm a positive intent for somebody. But they, if they don't believe it and if they don't necessarily want it, yes. then it's, it's not going to have any benefit for them. It might make yeah. you feel better. And we do it all the time with our kids. You know, we affirm things for our kids or we want things for our kids. And, um, but that has to come from them. I mean, I've got a 19 year old daughter who God love her has a very strong mind of her own. <laughs> and what I want for her is not necessarily what she wants for herself. So I've been learning that myself lately yeah. that I, yeah, it's so we can, good, but it's not always there. So we can affirm, I guess, on behalf of someone else, as long as that person has asked for the affirmation, I guess it's, pretty much for their highest good. So they just need to be in some form of a mental agreement with it, would you say? Yeah, that touches on when we're talking on a bit more of a spiritual level. So when we are in alignment with our life purpose, I suppose, yeah, and our higher selves, then I think that would be perfectly fine. 
Mm -hmm. And yeah. getting back to the I am statements, what are some examples that you could share with us of I am statements? Sure. So I am brave. Mm -hmm. I am doing the best I can. I am going to reach this certain level in the Taekwondo or karate or whatever it is, whatever sporting event that you like. It can be, I am loved. If you're feeling a little bit unloved that day, you're a little bit unappreciated, you can reaffirm that you are loved. You can affirm that you are, I am me. Okay? So you might not necessarily be everybody's cup of tea, but you can just keep affirming that I am me. I am kind. I am loving. I am generous. I am uh, where I am meant to be right now. So, so anything that's in the positive, in the present, and it's, so it's concentrating on the positive. We don't have those negative words. So it's not, I am not going to do this. It's, I am going to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. why do you find affirmations are so powerful? Because it is affirming exactly what we want and it allows us to realize what we want. Um, and because that can change over time as well. Mm -hmm. So something you thought you wanted one day, you might not want the next day. And it keeps you on track, keeps you motivated. It keeps you, um, it just keeps you alive. It keeps you focused on what you want and how you, and how you want it. And would you say it's also because it can release us from, I guess, negativity and fear, worry, and I guess a level of anxiety at all? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, there's a lot of fear-based energy around at the moment with, with COVID and what's going on. So um, I don't want to keep bringing it back to COVID because we can use these affirmations at any time. Mm. But at the moment, we can use it in a way that um, gives us more control over our environment and who we are and what we want to be and where we want to be. So at the moment, I'm supposed to be um, sunning myself on a Greek island, on a Greek, Greek island. And your holiday that you've been talking about for such a long time. I know. I know. And it was a long time in the planning and it was a lot of money and obviously we're not there because this is what's happening. So my affirmations lately, um, and I've been following my the trip itinerary that I should have been on every day thinking I should be there, I should be there. <laughs> But my affirmations are, uh, I am healthy. Yeah, I am healthy. I am loved. I am safe because luckily we're not sick here. Yes. Um, we're still working. Um, there's a lot of people worse off. There's always uh, people worse off. And we need, it would be really easy to slip into a deep, dark depression <laughs> about everything that we think the way things should be or where I should be or how it should be. Um, so staying in that positive mindset of what we do have and appreciate and being yeah. grateful for what we do have. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. That they always say that we can't be grateful and angry at the same time. So yep. um, as opposed to being frustrated or upset or angry that, you know, you're not on your holiday, you're actually looking at it from a different perspective. And that is being yep. appreciating what you do have. And I guess with yeah. these affirmations, you know, when we are repeating them over and over, they, they begin to really take charge of our thoughts, I think, and they slowly change our pattern of thinking, um, which ultimately sort of changes our lives, I think, would you say? Yes, definitely. And the more you do it and the longer you do it, as different um, things pop up in your life, the tendency will be to go towards the positive then more often rather than straight to the negative. Yeah. Now, yeah. I'd love to know from your perspective, what is the key to making uh, a affirmation work? Okay. So repetition, as we've said. Um, making it visual as much as you can and making it realistic and achievable. Yes. You know, there's no point saying, trying to affirm something that, you know, I'm going to be the president of the United States because it's not going to happen. Well, let's face it, pretty <laughs> much they're giving them away on, well, on cereal say, boxes these days. So. I know, that's probably a bad example. I might be able to be the president. Um, but, yeah, so making it realistic and achievable and... Um, being persistent and consistent and yep. visual, I think they're probably some of the top top keys for that. 
And would you say, I guess, with each, um, I guess, positive declaration that we have to truly believe, really believe that it's true. So this is both in our conscious and subconscious minds. I guess people may believe on a deeper level that maybe they don't deserve what it is that they're asking for if it is something that is um, a leap forward. Um, And I think the key to ensuring the positive affirmation works is to target the conscious level of our mind and also the unconscious, the subconscious, sorry, um, to, to really believe that the, what it is that we're asking for, in fact, is already in our lives. We just don't have it yet. So you have to truly believe that it's true. Would you, be, would you say that's another way of, of ensuring that affirmations work? Yes. And on a certain, on a different level, no, because not at first, because the reason that we start to affirm some of these things is because we don't believe it at mm-hmm. first so if you are affirming something like uh, you know i am loved it might be because you don't feel loved yeah you might not yep. feel that you are worthy of love so along with that you would be doing the work behind it so you might be seeing a counselor or you might be doing some um, self-care work to help you along that path so that you end up believing that does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, um, so sometimes it can be straight up, I believe this, I deserve this, I want to be a you know, criminal lawyer, so I'm going to go to school for eight years and I'm going to do this and that's it, job's done. And so you'd be affirming every day why you're doing it and mm. you will get to that point. But the I am loved statement is just an example of why you know, at first you might not believe it. And do you think that um, one of the main reasons maybe why affirmations don't work is because people really don't believe, truly believe on conscious and or a subconscious level that, that they are um, likely to achieve it or they, they don't believe that it's actually true? Yep, that and they don't put the work in with it. Yes. Yeah, there's a certain amount of um, action that has to go with the affirmation. So it's it's... You can't, like we said, you can't say you're going to win Tats Lotto if you don't buy the ticket. Yes. <laughs> you're not going to yes, get the yes, job yes. if you don't have the qualifications. You've got to get qualifications first to get to the job. So um, it's not a lazy way of being, working with affirmations. It's a, it's a, a doing way of being. You have to yes. put action to it. Do you believe that affirmations work while we sleep at all? I do. I do. There's a lot to be said about what happens when we sleep. I think... Um, in our dream state, um, we dream state is a, is a, a great place for affirmations. It's also a place where we are working out what's gone on during the day and uh, regulating different brain activity in that way. But yes, definitely in our dream state, I do believe that we are actively doing a lot of things we don't really understand <laughs> as yet. Yep. So I guess when we sleep out, you know, as we know, our conscious thinking completely disappears, but our subconscious can listen to positive affirmations and also can put us, our dreams in, uh, into like that REM sleep state as well. So it's in that sleep state that our subconscious mind is working. Is that right? Yeah, yes, definitely. And there's a lot of um, uh, meditations that you can use for that, that are on wonderful ones on YouTube, lots of free ones on YouTube. Jason Stevenson is a man that I subscribe to on YouTube and he has some wonderful affirmations on there. Mm -hmm. And they're ones that you can just put on and uh, pop on and fall asleep to. So they're still getting into your subconscious while you're asleep, which is another way of doing exactly what you were saying. Yeah. This has been a really insightful chat and I've loved it. If you were to summarize your key messages um, from this chat today, what would they be? Okay, so it would be to understand that, that positive statements are, or positive affirmations are statements that affirm how you want to be or who you want to be. So we want to reflect a state of being or a state of feeling. So we need to action these, um, keep them in the present, keep them in the positive, come up with I am statements as a starting point they're a really easy way to start with the positive affirmations. So affirming who you are, where you want to be, how you want to be in the now and in the positive. Mm-hmm. 
And of course, our um, show notes will have a link through to your article, which actually gives a lovely list of all of these um, and some great examples to begin with. Um, and following and people watching and listening to this, if they have any questions for you, whereabouts can they find you? Uh, obviously, on the Kittypedia website as a regular contributor, you, know, you can always find me there. Or they can see me on Facebook, Instagram, or my website, which is... Uh, www.rainbowlighttherapies.com.au Perfect. And I guess for everyone watching and listening, the question now is really for you. You know, what is it that you want to bring into your life, improve and or create? Um, you know, what are you going to, to focus on and what is going to be the affirmation that you, that you will say uh, over and over to yourself? Is there one? Is there three? It doesn't matter how many there are. But the no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> really, but, you know, so, so the question is first, what is it that you want to bring into your life? The second thing is, you know, what are the words that you're going to be saying to yourself? Um, and, you know, how are you now after this chat after you know this now finishes how are you going to set yourself up for success and ensure that you are going to stick to it are you going to put stick, sticky notes on um the, the the mirror in the bathroom or something on the fridge or are you going to set a reminder on your phone three times a day just to spend two minutes every time three times a day just to say that affirmation to yourself until it until you actually achieve it you know when are you when are you, when are you going to start well, right now is a perfect time and just take maybe five minutes just for yourself after listening, just to get started. And the quicker you do and the faster you will actually have what it is that you want in your life. So the question is, what are you waiting for? Off you go and get started. And let us know <laughs> yeah. how you go. But the most important part and the most exciting part is we really can create whatever we want in our lives as a, as a result of this. So this has been great. Thank you so much for your time, Kim. Take yeah. care. Thank you. And uh, we'll chat Thank again you for soon. Having me. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye.